Another special guest, another ingredient challenge this week. Michael Kornick here from Chicago. Uh, folks of a certain age will remember Marche. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, uh, don't say it red, that way. Red Light. Marche, Red, red Light. light. Uh, now, I met him first time when he was the chef across the street when it was Gordon, Gordon Restaurant. Gordon, Gordon right, right, back in the day. But now MK the Restaurant and the DMK Restaurants, correct? That's correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what do you think of when you think of Black Eyed Peas? Well, you know, I think of hearty. I think of rich. I think of good, solid... Uh, um, bean pea product that works really well with other flavorful ingredients. My dish today is sort of a take on escarole and beans. Okay. Done southern style. All right, cool. So you ready to go? I'm ready to 15 go. 15 minutes on the clock. Yeah. As you know, five ingredients. We're going to talk about those in a second when you start right. working, but we're going to set 15 minutes on the clock and right. begin. All Great. right. Michael, you're the guest. What is, what's your strategy? I need to get the escarole and bean part going. So that's going to be black-eyed peas, kale, some plum tomatoes, and smoked bacon. I'm going to start in the pan with smoked bacon and onions and let those cook and caramelize and render a little bit and that'll give me a little bit of fat uh, to cook the kale with. And Rick is also rendering fat it looks like. What yes, are you doing? I am doing bacon too. Exactly okay. what we've got going over there. And what I'm going to do is to cook my black eyed peas with that because when I think of black eyed peas, I think of New Year's Day. I grew up where every house you went to visit and that was the thing that we did. We went house to house that everybody served you a cup of black eyed peas. Okay. That was my tradition that I grew up with. I now think of black eyed peas as a little bit broader category but I'm going to do something that reminds me of my youth so I'm gonna do black eyed peas I'm doing canned black eyed peas Jiffy the Jiffy the good stuff mix okay <laughs> this is what I grew up with right. and so I'm gonna make some little pancakes out of that and right. uh, pretty straightforward delicious stuff in both cases using canned you're not using the dried uh, well no much because easier. we have 15 minutes I right mean, it's a really so, quick okay yeah. but you know it is better actually I think when you cook them from scratch just because you can get a really nice texture out of them that sometimes is missing in the canned ones. But um, I, I tell you that when I have, when you go into my pantry at home, I got a whole lot of canned beans because that is something that's very useful for quick cooking. Okay, Michael, tell us what you, you started rendering some bacon and you just added. Bacon. When I got a little bit of fat coated on the bottom of the pan, I added some thinly sliced julienne onions. And onions always have a little bit of sulfur that come off. It's kind of what makes us cry when we cut onions. And mm -hmm. I just like to let that cook off a little bit before I add. Uh, the tomatoes and kale. Okay. And, so and, and are you just going to do this so they sweat, or are you going to really try to... I'm going to try to get a little color. I've got the heat up, um, and I'm going to try to get a little color. Bacon and onions always such a great basis for, for a lot of things, right? It is, and, and especially with things like black-eyed peas, uh, cannellini beans, uh, navy beans and stuff, it adds that smoky richness that somehow we, we I, you know, in my history growing up, I, you know, my orientation to beans was... was you know, barbecued beans or baked beans, those kind of things. And I think that bacon's a real natural ingredient uh, to not only uh, enrich it, but flavor it and, and give it a little bit more complexity. Right. You're adding some more pork in a little bit. We'll get yeah. that in a second. So Rick's opening his Jiffy <laughs> box. I'm actually, when you're thinking about quick cooking, one of the things that I always rely on is something that has already been cooked to a certain point or prepared to a certain point and this gives me everything that I needed for my five ingredient challenge and now all I have to do is put in an egg and some milk and I'm done. I'm a little surprised there's no chipotles uh, yeah, in yeah, adobo yeah, yeah. here. Okay, that's usually, wait, that's wait. usually the shortcut. <laughs> okay so you got an egg in there and, egg some, and some milk. milk? A third okay. of a cup of milk goes in here. Super easy. Yeah? It is very easy. I now Michael what are you doing over here with the pork? I took a boneless pork loin chop. It's how, and it's so funny in, in the grocery store it's always listed as a boneless pork chop. Chop always meant bone to me. But uh, you see I brought a few slices already sliced that I just asked the butcher at the grocery if he could just slice from pork loin thinly. Okay. Here I sliced it myself but it's nothing that somebody at home has to worry about. But once you slice it I think everybody should have By the way, meat mallet at home. Good trick here. You sliced open a Ziploc bag right. and made it um, in half so you can cover it in half. Okay. And just now pounding it. Now if you don't have this you can use just a uh, uh, a rubber hammer, yep. you know, or even the back of a small saute pan. But this is really an inexpensive tool. They're sold almost everywhere. It's a meat mallet that has a little bit of uh, uh, spikes on one side and flat on the other side. And it just allows you to break down the cutlet a little bit, like if you were doing veal scallopini or pork cutlets. I don't mean to make the noise. But, but you're, think, using the, you're using the, um, the ridge side. Or the, with the, I am, because yeah. it just breaks down the, the okay. tissue a little bit and it'll make the, the cutlet a little more tender. And how do you know how thin? Cook. I mean, how thin do you want this to be? I'm trying to get this thin enough that it cooks very quickly. We have a 15-minute challenge here. Yeah. But even if I was at home, scallopini, thin, 
cooks quickly, covers the plate well, easy to eat with just a butter knife. Rick has uh, rendered a lot of fat over there. Yeah, so. rendered a lot of fat. I'm doing it over a fairly high temperature. All right, Cornick, all right already with the pounding okay, over time. here. He didn't want you to hear what I'm saying. <laughs> no, I do one more time. <laughs> okay. Yeah, let's, right. let's see. You want to, I, want to finish pounding it? Done. I okay. almost no, done. Okay. Um, I want to get some real brown going on that bacon because I think that's going to be the quickest way to enrich the flavor of these canned okay. black eyed peas. I want to see if we can get our camera over here to see in the pan a little bit um, how brown that is because that's kind of crucial. Yeah, maybe we could just show the camera. A lot of people say to cook right. bacon super slow, but I, I love when I'm going to use it as a flavoring in something to actually boost that temperature up so that I can get a nice brown on it. By the way, I should point out, if you are listening to us, you can watch the video on our website, thefeedpodcast.com. You can also see it on our YouTube channel, The Feed Podcast. We'll have links to it as well through social media. Um, but if you are just watching us on video, be sure to listen to the podcast. And again, go to the, thefeedpodcast.com. So Rick has now just poured uh, one I can poured in. it all in, all and in. I'm going to let that simmer for just the next few minutes as it thickens up just a little bit, concentrating the flavors. I've got some parsley here. This is flat leaf uh, Italian style parsley. I'm going to cut that up and um, put that in there because that's going to be my sort of herbal element because okay. the jiffy cornmeal pancakes that I'm making have a sweetness to them, so hey, I want this to come. Wait one second, Michael, what did you just do now over here? I just added some San Marzano plum tomatoes. Okay, three big ones. And I'm just going to break them up with my tongs. Okay. Uh, these are my favorite tasting of the preserved the, tomatoes. The onions are really, you can see a little caramelized, yeah, and now caramelized you're adding... The bacon. I'm adding the kale. Okay. And, and did I you do any of the kale beforehand? I took the stems off the kale. Now you could leave it on, but they do take longer to cook. Okay. And then I'm going to add, add the beans. beans. And I'm just going to let this simmer, almost like a bean stew or rag. And how are we on time? It looks like we've got about uh, eight minutes eight to go. Eight minutes. Okay. Eight minutes to go. Okay. Michael's going to finish pounding. Well, those are really thin. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Thin okay. And nice. So Rick has got his parsley he added to his pan right. with, his be with his beans and the bacon. I think I'm going to thin this. Because I'm using this not as a little cornmeal muffin, but as uh, a as a pancake, I'm going to thin it out just a little bit beyond what the uh, directions tell us to do. Okay. Yeah, that's going to be perfect, I think. Now, Michael, how do you know when you've, like if I'm the home cook, when you've uh, wilted that enough? You know, I'm not really um, trying to get it cooked as long as if I was cooking collard greens. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we do kale salads. We do kale just seared, and I think the kale just needs to be soft. And the steam is going to take care of that in the next six or so minutes. Okay. And then what's your plan after that? You're, you have to cook the pork. I'm going to saute these pork cutlets. So it's kind of like this but, idea of thinly, you know, uh, scallopino pork cutlets thinly sauteed served with this great black eyed pea rag. Okay. And these are not going to take very long because they're so thin. Right. Okay. Rick He's is making a real dish. I'm he just is. making this. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so what are you doing now? Okay, I'm just making little pancakes here. <laughs> the pan yeah. is not very hot, is it? I uh, know it's medium. No, medium. I had okay. it on since we started, so I always do that to heat up the pan first. Then I filmed it with a little bit of oil, and now I'm putting the batter in here to make these. But and the, our our black eyed peas are just simmering away. I was gonna say that. they're simmring pretty good though. You got yeah, because I want to because we only have 15 minutes for this challenge. Okay, <laughs> I might do it a little <laughs> bit slower if I was uh, <laughs> taking my time at home. All right. How many pancakes? Three or four? I'm going to do four of them four. in this pan here, okay. just like you would on Sunday morning. All right. Let's just say that. And these are going to be served as a pancake and then the black eyed peas black over, over it. the top of it. So I'm kind of thinking that maybe this is a little bit like a first course kind of thing that you could serve. Um, okay. It's also, if you wanted to have... Well, I was going to call it sort of a vegetarian or a vegetable forward main course. Mm -hmm. This would work really good as well. It's not exactly vegetarian because it has the bacon in it, but right. it's not heavy in the meat. Let's just put it that okay. way. Okay, Michael has just seasoned both sides of his very thinly sliced pork. Now laying them into a pan. We put a little bit of butter in the pan, just yeah? a little bit of butter. Butter does not count as an ingredient. Well, one of your five. What have you got for your five? Your onions, I have your pork. onions, kale, pork. Tomatoes. Now we have to make Great. sure that you're okay. not cheating. Here. I tried to <laughs> cheat. I brought <laughs> celery, but they made me throw it out. Okay. The judges Occasionally, you know, the, 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 the competitors share ingredients yeah. if they're feeling <laughs> generous. Okay, so you're, now you're adding your seasoning with pepper on that yeah, side. A little bit more 
And this is going to take, what, 30 seconds per side, it looks oh, like? Oh, yeah. Okay. And how are we on time? Nice About nice. five minutes to go? That's the nice thing, actually, about those really thin cut. Um, anything, whether it's chicken or pork or some kind of beef, you can get it cooked so fast. Very nice. Okay, so um, I'm curious, by the way, you've got different types of restaurants. DMK Fish, DMK Burger, and then MK the Restaurant is much higher end. Do you find yourself using beans in any of these restaurants? We do. And, uh, you know, our, one of our signature dishes at Ada Street is crispy black eyed peas. It's been a signature dish since we opened. I've and had it and it's yeah. delicious, right? Yeah. That's why we thought of you for black eyed peas. <laughs> I, I knew there was a reason, but you know, um, so we do all sorts of beans and legumes and, and, uh, and things uh, throughout the season, but, but really black eyed peas has been a staple at Ada Street since we opened. Wow, okay. And I want to point out Ada Street, along with Michael's other restaurants, will be on our website under more information on the Feed Podcast in case you're wondering where Ada Street is. So you're now plating You've got your four thinly sliced uh, pieces of pork here. You're plating kind of just in general here, nothing fancy, right? Just kind of over the top. No, over the top. You know, um, it was funny over the weekend, we're going to, uh, Fish Bar is going to go to New Orleans for the winter. Mm. And so we're doing an all New Orleans menu there. And we were working on a couple of the dishes over the weekend. And one of them is uh, uh, etouffee. And so uh, they wanted to plate it and they were kept trying to make it pretty with rice and a shave. And I said, no, no. It's a two fan. It's rice. Simple. And over the top. And, and Rick it's is so good. It's so good. Now Rick is plating the same thing. You sort of what do you call that? Shingling your yeah, the pancakes a little shingle bit? Shingle the pancakes out and now I'm just spooning the black eyed peas with bacon and parsley over the top. Delicious. Gosh, both of these dishes. And you're coming in under fifteen minutes. We are. We're not even gonna go to fifteen minutes, which is even better for the folks at home. They're gonna love this. Um, and Fantastic. We have two minutes to go, but, but really, plenty of time. One of the other things with either of these ragouts, you can do it the day before. Yeah. You know, sometimes I think people are nervous that they have to make everything a la minute or right before we sit down or right before we eat. The nice part about working with beans and a ragu or a stewed bean like this is you can make it and refrigerate it and heat it up the next day, and it's, it's got plenty of moisture and plenty of flavor and ready to go. They look both. They both look beautiful. Um, we're going to take some pictures in a second, and then we're going to taste them. Great. Okay. All right. Let's do it. They look beautiful. They smell <laughs> beautiful. Got, Rick is ready to go with a knife and fork. I got a knife okay. and a fork. I'm going to cut this up so that we can all taste it. You give you a beautiful a fork job taste. there, great. Michael. Okay, there. I think we can all get. It'll right. probably be easier for us if Why I move it there. Why do like this in the middle? Yeah. And we can all just kind of dig in. Yeah. You know, there's something really unique about the flavor of um, black-eyed peas that I'm I really love. But when I was a kid, I hated it. <laughs> mm. Oh, it's beautiful. It's so much like so many things, right, that we mm -hmm. learn uh, to grow to love. Bitter uh, greens are the one for me. But a lot of people think that it's in the regular bean family, but it's not. It's in this other other family, which gives it a very unique flavor. This is such a beautiful mm. weeknight dish that Completely. several people could have yeah. together and be very satisfied. The tomato, I, even there's like a little bit of the juice from the tomatoes yes. that, has, that has given it some mm. nice flavor, yeah? Excellent. Yeah, beautiful dish. All right, Rick? Beautiful. All right, I want to try to... The, the corn cakes with the okay. Jiffy Box. With the right. <laughs> you have here. to see. The box is not this this is one of those nostalgic things for me, I have to say. A little bits of bacon when, when thrown I, here. Actually, quite a lot of bacon. Mm -hmm. A lot of bacon. Mm -hmm. mm, but the crispiness on the outside of the pancake's nice, too. Yeah, I uh, heated the pan quite a bit and then filmed it with oil so I could get that crispiness on the outside. A lot of people don't know that you can use that Jiffy Mix for making really good corn pancakes. I like the flavor of the corn with the beans versus the pork and the greens with the beans. Very different uh, Very approach, different. isn't it? There's a sweetness and there's a lightness mm -hmm. to the pancake. Mm -hmm. You know, um, corn cakes, we used to use that and in, in, in bake it uh, in Madeleine uh, mm -hmm. molds oh, and wow. have the little garnish uh, for rich dishes, you mm -hmm. know, because there's something, you know, it's not overly sweet mm -mm. Mm -hmm. but right. it's just, just right. sweet enough both yeah. delicious both recipes are going to be mm -hmm. on our website thefeedpodcast.com nice. go see michael cornick at one of his many restaurants michael cornick mm -hmm. thanks so much for coming in today thanks so much Thank for you. Having so all right so what a pleasure happy new year fun to cook thanks. with you happy new year so much happy new year have a great holiday this weekend